Welcome uh, to this segment. We're here with Humberto Peña. He's the director of a residential treatment facility for uh, males, adult males. And the name of the program is uh, Serenidad a Recovery Home. And uh, as you know, um, SCAN has uh, separate uh, facilities for male and females, both for, for adolescents and adults. And Humberto has been leading this program for a few years already. So then he's gonna to talk to us about uh, the process uh, of treatment and, and residential uh, programs. So welcome, uh, Humberto. Thank you, thank you for having me. Happy to be here. A lot of people, a lot of people that are watching this segment um, may be wondering, you know, what happens in the treatment process and they may even be a little anxious about uh, considering treatment, mm -hmm. but they may be suffering from, from drugs and alcohol. Right. So then can you kind of, you give us some information about what happens? Absolutely, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, it's uh, it's pretty normal. Uh, most people, it, it, it really is a difficult decision to come into treatment, um, to kind of get to that point and admit that, that you need help. It, it's pretty normal. Most people will feel like that. And, and the anxiety levels are pretty high. I think everybody that comes into treatment is, uh, is skeptical at first. Uh, but to kind of put their mind at ease, kind of what we do here is we, 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 we're we trying to focus on helping people, you know, change a, a lot of aspects of their lives. Most people have this misconception that when they come into residential treatment that we're going to focus on, on the substance use, which is, and, and, and we are, it is the primary thing that we do. We we help people stay off mm -hmm. the alcohol and, and the drugs. But um, I think a lot of times when families come in here and, and, and we start to, to, to let them know what we do, we take more of a holistic approach to, to helping people. Mm -hmm. um, we, yes, we do focus on the alcohol and the drugs. It's the very important thing. It's the number one reason why people come in exactly. here. And, and we are gonna help them with that. But there's other aspects to what we do in treatment that, that help uh, the individual. For example, when, we, when we're focusing on the alcohol and the drugs, we, we do this in the form of group therapy. Mm -hmm. We do individual sessions, we do life skills trainings, and we also do uh, ropes, rope mm -hmm. skills trainings as well. And to kind of elaborate on each of the little segments, group counseling or group education is precisely what it sounds. This is the meat of what we do mm -hmm. in, in, in residential treatment. Um, persons will be in groups somewhere between two to five hours on a daily basis. Okay, so very intensive. The, the, and this is the intensive, and I'm glad you said mm -hmm. that. It, it's, it's pretty intensive. Uh, it, the first aspect of, of treatment, and, and I'm gonna backtrack a little bit, is the intensive phase. When a person comes into treatment for the first time, most, most people will go into what we call the intensive phase of treatment. And so, to kind of answer that question, what is that? I think this is the stabilization phase of treatment. This is where the person comes in here for the first time, he's, 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 he's coming off the drugs, the drugs are leaving his system. So there's a stabilization period. And so we call this the intensive phase. Mm -hmm. And during that phase, it can last up to about 45 days, 60 days if needed. And this is why we're, we're, we're so focused on the education, the relapse prevention, and most importantly, the coping skills, especially mm -hmm. in those first two weeks of treatment, we're trying to teach them how to, how to be able to cope and deal with these new feelings that they may be experiencing without having to use alcohol and drugs. Let me ask you a question. What if uh, many people that are come to your doors mm -hmm. also have an, an underlying mental health condition? There may be depression, anxiety, maybe uh, traumatic stress. Okay. And um, is this does this complicate treatment? Or do you address this as part of your treatment? Well, I, I don't think it complicates treatment. It, 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 what it does is, is uh, we look at it as part of the whole holistic approach, and yes, we do. We, we do address it. Uh, it comes in the form of the, the, in the initial assessment when we come in there, when we make the determination if this person qualifies for some type of mental health mm -hmm. evaluation, or, or we don't actually do the diagnosis, but if he kind of fits the bill for it, we address it in the form of a, of a program called COPSTE program, which is co-occurring psychiatric substance use disorders, and. Um, a person that would that would meet that criteria would not only be connected to the substance use mm -hmm. and the holistic approach, but there's also he would be attached to what we I, I like to call it he, he'll, a, a case manager will be attached to that person okay. to, to be to be able to address all those issues mm -hmm. out there in the community using the several of the resources that we mm -hmm. use for 
for mental health. But yes, absolutely, this is something that we mm-hmm. that we do that we encourage, and we we also provide medication management for people that already have the existing diagnosis and they're coming in with a medication. We provide the the, okay. the the medication management, make sure that they're taking it on time, as prescribed, to kind of help them alleviate some of the the. Uh, the symptoms. the symptoms of, of the of the mental health to give them a better opportunity mm-hmm. at uh, at being successful in residential treatment. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, kind of going back to the intensive phase with the group therapy, it, there's there's a couple of things that we do there. It's uh, first of all, it's the group counseling, which is more focused on catharticism, exploring our own feelings, our own thoughts, um, kind of what they're experiencing, and of course, this is structured. You know, we we, we do follow a, a curriculum. But it gives them an opportunity to get connected with their with their internal uh, self and and how their substance use has been affecting their daily lives and other aspects in their life as well their mm-hmm. family relations their relationship with uh, the criminal justice system if, if those things exist and stuff like mm-hmm. that and then the other forms of group are education and this is these are more didactic we provide them with a lot of facts a lot of uh, stuff a lot of information that. They, they may need to uh, make better decisions about their alcohol yeah. and substance use. Okay. All right. Well, okay. I appreciate it. So let's say that somebody's watching this segment and they're interested. What are some of the requirements to, to be admitted to this program? Well, first of all, they have to be 18 years and older and male, of course. They have to have a substance use disorder. Yeah. Uh, and, and basically, if they meet those two criteria. Uh, you would qualify for our program. And I guess also that they're medically indigent. And that they're medically indigent, uh, of course. And, and they don't uh, have insurance. If they have private insurance, uh-huh. uh, and then they will not qualify for our program. If they do have uh, Medicaid insurance, and then they would qualify okay. for our program. Yes, so if they have Medicaid, they qualify. Um, and then just so that our viewers can know, when we talk about medically indigent, we mean people that don't have insurance or have means to pay this program is free for them of course it's completely free it's a hundred percent free in all aspects of it yes when they, when they are medically indigent yes and you have to provide meals you you know you provide the we, can you talk a little bit about your facility sure absolutely uh the uh, going back to the meals we have an on-site cook the the the, the participant that that is there will be provided a, a breakfast lunch and dinner hot meal every day um, during the holidays and stuff like that, they get uh, the culturally food like tamales and stuff for, for, for our mm-hmm. area. Uh, some of the other things that uh, it's important for people to know, like if they're coming to the Serenidad, it is a 26 bed facility. Uh, we have a new section in the back. It's, it's a pretty well kept modern facility, I think. Um, we have a uh, we have a recreation area for the guys out there. It's the, we have an opportunity for them to 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 do weights and stuff like that. So physical um, fitness is included. Physical too. fitness is included. Which goes back to your holistic approach. To, Correct. Yeah. Uh, so they have an opportunity to play volleyball. Mm-hmm. We have a pool table on site. Um, we also have a property next to to our facility that we use uh, on occasion. That we use uh, we use it for rope skills training, mm-hmm. and um, it, they're really interesting because. Those groups are intended to provide mm-hmm. education, relapse prevention, but they take a very different approach to it. It's more of a, an opportunity for them to engage and be challenged, not only mentally, but mm-hmm. physically as well, if they're capable, of course. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it takes them outside of the, uh, of the classroom into, into the outdoors. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's counter to that group. And a lot of the, the participants really, really, really enjoy those groups mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So they, they become a, a, okay. a good part of the the, the process as well. sounds, sounds like you provide a lot of different services um let me ask you this and uh so then if they say yes uh, you know i, I like the what you've been describing um what are the specific things do they need to bring clothing do they need to bring what kind of documentation do they need to bring what are the, what are, when, once, the, once the participant uh, uh makes the decision to come into treatment i think the uh the most common question, and I'm trying to reflect that they ask is, what do we need to take? Of course, we, we ask them for clothing for seven days at, at, at a minimum. If they have it, great. If they don't, that's okay. But at a minimum, because they they that way they only get to wash once a week mm-hmm. and stuff like that. We ask them to, to also bring all their hygiene products as well. We mm-hmm. don't accept aerosols because sometimes 
It can be used. They can be used uh, erroneously there and stuff like that. Um, we asked them to bring their, their towel, um, their, their laundry detergent and stuff like that uh, to, to come in there. Some of the other things that we may ask them, they can bring in their own reading materials as long as they're yeah, they go along acceptable with what, exactly. what we're, 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 we're is, pre yeah. mm -hmm. exactly. Uh, they can they can also bring an MP3 player with it, which is a personal music thing. Yeah. Uh, no communication devices are allowed. We don't allow, allow cell phones, cell phones, iPod, iPads, not computers. We don't allow it. And which, a lot of the questions makes sense because it's a time for self reflection. You don't exactly. want them to be distracted. Or exactly. People always ask me why can't I, I do that, and I was my most basic answer is we need your brain here. Exactly. <laughs> you know, we need it outside here yeah. tomorrow. Exactly. We need to focus on, on yourself here. So mm -hmm. those are some of the items that, that we can. Okay. If you have any questions about any items, feel free to call us, and, okay. and we would answer you if, if it's an approved item or not. Thank you so much. Thank you. This is a lot of information, very helpful information, and for uh, the viewers. But we want to let you know that uh, in case that you think that you may need the services, that you can always call SCAN. Uh, the number is 956-724-3177. And um, we will actually schedule uh, a visit with you to do a screening and assessment and find out if you are suitable for the residential treatment program uh, or you may need any of the type of services. So, Again, I want to thank you for your time, and, and this was great information to share with our viewers. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Luis, for having me. Thank sure. you.